I hope you've at least written this line down. This is the easy line to write. But I want you to see, you remember we pulled this trick before. When you have that one on A on the top, right? When you bring it on the denominator and then stick it underneath the square root sign, it becomes an A squared. And so that's why everything is nice and neat. But then over here, it's not quite the same, is it? Right? Do you notice that? Um, here, you want an A squared to cancel out on the bottom, but you don't have an A squared up there. And there's no square root on the denominator to turn your A into an A squared. You could just leave it as it is, and you'll have a fraction and something else weird over here. The mathematicians kind of want it to be nicer and neater and a little more symmetrical. So here's what they... Sorry, yeah. Oh, of course it is. Yeah, thank you. So, once you have your signs right, here's what they do to make it a little nicer and neater. What I really want is a 1 on a squared up on this denominator. Okay? What would I have to multiply this whole right-hand side by to get a 1 on a squared up there? It's a 1 on a, right? If I multiply this by 1 on a, this will become 1 on a squared. But of course, you can't just go around multiplying things because they're nicer and neater. This is an equation, so I need to keep everything balanced. Okay? So I multiplied the right-hand side by 1 on a. I better multiply the left-hand side by 1 on a as well. You see what I've done there? Okay. So noticing that, this is just a constant. I can take him in and out of this derivative statement as I please. I'm just going to stick him inside because this guy, it's not quite as neat as what I had before, but what it gives me on the right hand side is nice, right? What happens when that a squared migrates down from the numerator to the denominator? What do I get on the bottom? Yeah, very good. This is multiplying everything through on the denominator, so it's a squared, and this guy just cancels out. So you get something quite similar to what I had over there, and just like I've got a derivative statement, I can now write an integral statement that goes with it. Okay. So if I take this right-hand side, and I integrate with respect to x, okay, I'm going to get this guy. Well, be careful, it's got this 1 on a out the front, which sine inverse did not have. Okay, so I'm going to write it like so. Okay, now, I was fiddling around with my cables before. Number one, I'll put a color around it. Number one, and number two. These are on your reference sheet, let me show you. Say that again? Yeah, we'll do, we'll do a numerical example in a second. Okay, so here's page three of the reference sheet which you've seen and used before. It's page three because this is the extension one page. And so that's why you expect to find our uh, inverse trig there because there's no inverse trig in two unit. Okay, so you come over here and it says further integrals. There are the two results that we just proved. They're nice and neat. Except there is a conspicuous absence from our list, right? There's sine inverse, and there's tan inverse, and where's cos inverse? Okay. So cos inverse is not there. Explicitly, it actually is there, right? Let me try and show you where it is. Simple example. Uh, you don't need to write this part, but there's a lot of good color to use. If I asked you, say, uh, what's the integral of 2x dx? Tell me what that is. I'm integrating. I'm integrating. We, we've got to be really good at switching back and forth because you're going to have to do both at different times in the same paper. Okay. So this guy is x squared plus c. Yes. What is this a general? What is this a specific case of? What's the general rule that goes with this? If I have some kind of polynomial, and that's a polynomial, like say x to the power of n. Yeah. And I'm integrating that with respect to x. What you did was, you increased the power, it went from 1 to 2. Yep. So this is going to become x to the n plus 1. And then I had to divide by whatever that new power was, which is exactly what you did to cancel out that 2, plus my constant. Okay, does that make sense? Now, that's fine. You can do everything like this in this form. Would it be justifiable to say, oh, it's a whole new rule to say, well, if I put a minus sign there, this is a whole new thing. Would that be justifiable or needed? No. What a really, right? It's like, well, this is so similar. This is so similar to this. It really, there's, there's no point. And that's kind of why. Let's, let's zoom back out. And we'll go to two unit. 
Where is he? This here is kind of, they've gone a step further. So this is kind of the, the chain rule. Um, they've got a, a whole linear function in there, but that's just another version of this. Okay, so they've gone one extra step. Okay, And it's not like, oh yeah, I have this integral. And then I also have the one where there's a negative sign out the front and you get a negative sign here because it's just a constant. <laughs> Agreed? Okay, now pause this for a second. Nope, that's not what I want. When we wrote down this statement here, this statement here, I asked you to dodge the cos inverse one and just move on to tan inverse. Okay, what would happen if we rewrote? And you don't need to, do, you don't need to do any computation. Okay, just think with me and use the comparison that you've got here. If I were to write the same statement for cos inverse, how would it look? The derivative of cos inverse of sorry x on a. What would it be? It's going to be exactly the same, except with a negative sign on the front. Right? Do you agree with that? Huh. So what you've got here, and we showed this geometrically and we proved it properly, is that because these things, their derivatives are only off by a constant, okay? Therefore, when you come over to, well, actually this line here, when you come to make this statement, instead of sine inverse here, if I had a minus here, right? This could be cos inverse, right? This could be cos inverse. The minus could be there or the minus could be here. I could just multiply both sides by negative 1. Okay? So I could say the integral of 1 on the square root of a squared minus x squared with respect to x. Maybe I didn't come from sine inverse. Maybe what I came from was negative cos inverse, right? Plus the cousin. Just think about what these look like, okay? Um, this might be worth just roughly sketching beside all this so you have the picture together. Doesn't need a big one. What does sine inverse look like? And what would negative, that's the wrong place to put it, Where, what would negative cos inverse look like, okay? We're really good at sine inverse by now, so we're getting this kind of shape, right? Now, we know what regular cos inverse looks like. It would be up here. Right? So when you slap that minus sign on the front, it reflects. That's why I only drew this bottom part of it, right? And what's it going to look like? Instead of this, that's the regular one, you're going to get this guy. Which, at every point in which it exists, has the same gradient as this. Does that make sense? So here's your gradient function over here, and it's saying, okay, when you integrate, where will you end up? And the answer is, you could end up here. That's like an obvious place to go. But if you wanted to, you could just state it like that as well. Quick question. There is still a difference between these two. They're, they're not the same function. What's the difference? The answer is it's a constant, right? You're shifted up and down. How much? <coughs> yeah, and we should have known that because one of the first earlier identities I showed you was this guy, right? It's equal to pi on 2. So all I have to do to turn sine inverse into cos inverse is say, I'll put the sign out the front. Okay, slap so a minus sign on the front like this, and then if you shift it upwards, pi on two units, then you come up to be exactly the same as sine inverse. Okay, so that's why. Good morning, take a seat. Sine inverse, the integral's there. Tan inverse, integral's there. Cos inverse? It's not there because you get it from the sine inverse one. And they're so similar, they're only off by a negative sign and the constant which is already there, that's why it's not an extra thing that's on there. Okay, So don't feel like, oh, they're missing something. No, these are so connected you don't need to state both of them. Okay?